Toe touching is a baseline test for my orthopedic evaluation that I use a lot. And I use it a lot because not only do I use it to assess for low back mobility, for low back complaints, but because I find so many lower extremity complaints are due to low back mechanical disorders, I use it for those patients as well. So anyone who has a complaint from even the mid back, but especially the lower back down to the toes, I'm taking the four primary motions of the low back as part of my range of motion baselines. And for lower extremity complaints, I'm taking range of motion of the lower extremity joint or joints. So toe touching, importantly, is misunderstood. And just like other range of motion baselines, it's the starting point. It doesn't tell me your capability. It tells me what you are capable of at that very moment. Just like if you went to a physician's office and you were running a temperature of 100 degrees, well, that's not your normal temperature probably. You're running a fever. And so we take that as the starting point and recognize that it's changeable. So toe touching, most people incorrectly assume that it's really just stressing and assessing the hamstring muscles because they need to elongate in order to get that maximum hip flexion in toe touching. And that's true, but hamstrings are not the only structures or tissues that are stressed and assessed when we do toe touching. So when I think of what I'm looking for when I have somebody touch their toes, the first thing I think about is low back flexion. So of the four primary motions of the low back, we have flexion, extension, side gliding left and right. Low back flexion is what I test with toe touching. So you have to be able to flex your low back appropriately to reach a certain level. Again, what I'm looking for is for most people to get to their feet. But when we take it, I'm noting where they get to and then we're assessing for change. So low back mobility into flexion is the number one thing I'm thinking if there's a deficit that is likely related to someone's complaint. Secondly, you need bilateral hip flexion. Your hip joints proper need to flex for you to go down and touch your toes. Thirdly, I also think of thoracic spine flexion. So while it's not as commonly disrupted and affecting toe touching, something in the thoracic spine, I would surmise more likely in the lower thoracic spine, can impede the ability to touch your toes. And then of course we do get to hamstrings. You need to have length in your hamstrings in order to toe touch. But the fifth one that I think of a lot is sciatic nerve extensibility. So the sciatic nerves, there's a big one on your left and on your right. They need to be unimpeded for you to touch your toes, just like the straight leg raise test for nerve tension on the back raises the leg perpendicular to the floor. It's the same thing as toe touching, just toe touching is in a standing position, which is weight bearing through the joints. There are other things that are needed to touch your toes. For example, you need to have long enough arms. You need to not have a shoulder mobility problem. We could get into all those little things, but these are the five main things I'm thinking of. So how do I figure out what of these five things is causing any lack of mobility or how do I determine if there is a lack of mobility? Well, I'll give you an example. I had a patient recently and he came in and his complaints were bilateral thighs, bilateral hips just always feel tight. They felt that way kind of for decades and I'll occasionally get some low back complaints on the right side. So when I took the four motions of his lumbar spine and standing, he could get to his ankles and he just felt like a strain, normal stretch, no pain, nothing um, sounding the alarms. I had him go into low back extension and standing. I put that I thought it was a minimal loss. I thought he should be able to go more based on seeing thousands of patients low back extension. But again, it doesn't really matter what my guess is. It matters if it changes when we do the appropriate testing. So I wrote down ankles in, term, in terms of toe touching, low back flexion. I assumed, or I made the 
hypothesis that it was a minimal loss, but I just wrote down ankles, no pain, low back extension, minimal loss, no pain. And then we did side gliding left and right, and it was free and pain free or full and pain free. So for some clinicians, they might just be like, oh, your hamstrings are a little tight. Or for the lay person, I think they're almost always assuming it's their, their hamstrings that are tight and that's precluding them from touching their toes. And I dare say that for many clinicians, if this patient went to them, they would also be like, oh, your low back's moving fine. It's not a low back problem, it's probably a hip problem. And of course I took hip baselines for this gentleman because his complaints are in the hip and thigh areas. And there was limited range of motion with pain with hip mobility. And we've largely cleared that with moving the lumbar spine Again, bilateral symptoms, especially atraumatically, are almost always spine or non-musculoskeletal. So for this gentleman, again, I don't know why he can't get all the way to his toes. Maybe that's his structural genetic makeup. Maybe his hamstrings are tight. Maybe his thoracic spine has a mechanical problem. Maybe his hip joints are, are stopping him from doing it. But I thought it was his low back. But long story short, We've done a lot of low back extension for this gentleman, primarily sustained lumbar extension. And now he can get his fingers under his shoes. So getting knuckles to the floor. So gaining a few inches of toe touching ability. And the, the reason I bring this particular scenario up is because we did that. And then five minutes later, he gained range of motion into low back flexion and toe touching. And he's like, oh, my hamstrings are looser. And I stopped him and I said, no, we did not stretch your hamstrings. We did nothing to affect the tissue and the posterior thigh in terms of your hamstrings because we had him do lumbar extension. That is not stretching the hamstrings. So I wanted to, him to understand that no, what you achieved just now in a few minutes is we mechanically moved the low back for him. The directional preference seems to be extension based on his you know, large gains in, in a few weeks, but because we had a mechanical problem in the low back and because we found the directional preference for you, which is extension, now we've unlocked your low back mobility in all of the planes. So a directional preference for a mechanical joint problem will improve range of motion in all planes, not just the plane you're going into. If it's just improving the plane you're going into, and it's not affecting other limited and or painful range of motion, then that's not the definition of a joint arrangement with a directional preference because the directional preference has to abolish all the signs and symptoms. So I wanted him to know that we didn't do anything to the hamstrings. The hamstrings are fine and we didn't stretch them. We didn't do PNF with them. We didn't do anything with them. In fact, if anything, putting him in lumbar extension, you know, maybe shorten the hamstrings. So, I really want people to start to question if they can't toe touch, why they can't toe touch. And we can test the low back in supine by having people bring their knees to their chest. But because I can't really see how far that goes and I can see where the hands reach on the legs going down with the legs straight, it's easier for me to measure for change in the toe touching standing version of low back flexion. But touching on the sciatic nerve, if there's an irritation in the low back, mechanical or otherwise, if there's an irritation on the sciatic nerve, that sciatic nerve might not move freely, just like a foot being on the hose, you're not gonna be able to tug on the hose. And so for people who have, who have sciatica, they can usually um, feel that, especially if it's on one leg, they try to toe touch and they're like, oh, I can't go. My right leg is just like, it's just, uh, you know, it's a guitar string. It won't go. So that can play into the low back. They're usually intertwined because the sciatic nerve comes from L4, L5, S1, S2, S3 nerve roots that come from the low back. So if there's a sciatic nerve problem, nearly all cases, the root cause is the lumbar spine where those five nerve roots exit they subsequently become the sciatic nerve in the kind of medial upper buttock area. But unless there was trauma to the periphery, sciatic nerve irritation is primarily because of one of the five nerve roots is irritated. So do not jump to hamstrings if there's a limitation in movement. And the same applies to all movements. You can't just jump to tissues 
And particularly, you can't just jump to muscles. Range of motion can be limited for many different reasons. And the main reason or the main way I determine what is causing a lack of range of motion or um, whether or not range of motion is changeable is by doing repeated movement testing. So using this example of this gentleman, if I applied repeated movement testing to this gentleman's low back, and let's say I did extension for a week or two weeks and I thought I thought it was getting better, we thought we were on the right track, but it turns out it's not really moving the needle. His range of motion is not really improving. His thigh tightness is about the same. Well, then I would, if I've already applied more force, more time, gone up the force progression ladder with repeated movement testing into low back extension, maybe trying it standing versus soup or versus prone, etc. We've determined that's not the right direction for this gentleman. Although I still think that there's a mechanical joint derangement in the low back, I will try something possibly like flexion repeatedly or side glide repeatedly or flexion rotation, etc. So say we go to side glides and we do 30 side glides on the wall and now boom, he can toe touch. Well, again, that would incriminate the joint because we didn't stretch the hamstrings. We didn't really move the thoracic spine or hip joint that much. So that's how you tell if the range of motion is due to a mechanical joint problem or a tissue problem. Because if I tried a few different sessions of a few different movements and I just thought to myself, wow, this isn't budging and say he had no thigh symptoms, say his only complaint was I can't touch my toes. Well, then if everything else is moving well, then I could say, let's do some PNF on the hamstrings or let's do some other form of kind of elongation methods to get them longer because it seems to be that that's the limiting reason why you can't toe touch. But I, the tissue idea, the muscle tightness restriction idea is last on my list when it comes to what I'm going through about why someone can't move in a certain direction. The hamstring is just the most obvious one because so many people, myself included, up until my late 20s, I could only reach my distal shins when I tried to do touching. And then when I figured out that there was a way that my back was tweaked in a specific direction, unlocked it, now I can toe touch. And so for years, I just thought it was my hamstrings, probably because popular culture told me that, probably because a coach taught me that or an athletic trainer in college or somebody told me that, but it wasn't my hamstrings. And if, if I had attempted to stretch them, I probably would have gotten um, at best just a little bit more flexibility. So toe touching is a low back mobility test first, but it's also um, stressing and assessing all of these things. And then we use repeated movement testing to as, as assess for change because repeated movement testing is moving joints in a particular direction. So if moving a joint in a particular direction frees up range of motion, then that means that the joint was the issue. If repeated movement testing of the joints in specific directions does not change mobility, then we start to think, okay, it might be tissues, it might be non-musculoskeletal, and so on. That's why I use repeated movement testing as part three of my orthopedic evaluation. It allows me to really zero in on the diagnosis and not make assumptions because I know what should change when we apply repeated movement testing, especially if we move in the correct direction. And I know what should not change. And I do not expect tissue tightness, especially muscle tightness that's been there for years to change when I move a joint. So get the right tests don't jump to the conclusion that your tissues are tight.